Good morning. Thank you so much uh, for joining us once again this Sunday. It's my joy to welcome all of you. Hope Church loves you and family and friends. And if it's your first time, you're very, very much welcome. We're so glad to have you here at Hope Church. You are a vibrant and passionate church that is changing the world for Christ. I know some of you are joining this service with so much excitement. Uh, those guys who finished from four, we know you're celebrating, you finished high school. Uh, class 8, you received your results just over a week ago. Some of you are celebrating when you know, you're feeling a bit anxious, parents waiting for their school placements. But relax guys, God is in control. And I want you to approach this service with thanksgiving. I want you to approach this service with so much joy, knowing that God is always on your side. Let me read for us Psalm 95 as we prepare to begin our praise and worship. The psalmist says, Oh, come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with a song of thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. Why? For the Lord is great and a great king above all gods. So join us as we praise and worship the Lord. Let me pray with us as we begin. Heavenly Father, we come before you this moment and we want to thank you so much for another opportunity to be alive, to have the opportunity to praise and to worship you. We ask that even as we come into your presence with thanksgiving, some of us will come with burdens, some of us will come with testimonies. Whatever it is, Lord, we bring it before you because we know we are in the right place. So receive all the glory, receive all the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the praise and worship. Well, good morning. Let's praise the Lord together. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go into the house of the Lord and give him praise. Because his love is amazing. Come on. Your love is kind. Come on, say it. Your love is patient. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You feel my heart with so much peace and joy. Come on, tell him you're amazing. Say. You're amazing. Oh. You make my life feel brand new. Oh, oh, oh. You're amazing. You make my life feel Believe it today, come on, say it. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, Declare oh, oh, oh. too much. Oh, oh, oh. Too much. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sante, where any wemba? 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 Sante, where any wemba?
Utabaki kuwa mungu Afa na omega Ubadi liki kambwe Zaidi ya yote Zaidi ya yote Utabaki kuwa mungu Afa na omega Ubadi liki kambwe Nikisa zama yuma na mbele Naona uku wako Kaskazini usini bia Naona uku Mashariki na kumagari bibia Hei Naona uku wako Zaidi ya yote Zaidi ya yote Utabaki kuwa mungu Utabaki kuwa mungu Hapa na umeka Ubadi likikamwe Zaidi ya yote Zaidi ya yote Zaidi ya yote Utabaki kuwa mungu Utabaki kuwa mungu Hapa na umeka Ubadi likikamwe Hei Come on, give him God. Give him a dance in your house right now, wherever you are. He's a good, good guy. Put your back in cool and move. Come on, one more time. Say, Sign the Ayote. Baba, put your back in cool and move. Alpha now, Omega. Alpha now, Omega. Zaidi He's a good God and he never changes. Hallelujah. Amen. Indeed, Lord, we want to say above all else, you remain God. And there's nothing that is too big for you. There's nothing that you cannot do. So, Lord, we have worshipped, knowing that we have a God who is above everything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Benjamin and the worship team for leading us in worship. And now I want to turn our attention to giving. I uh, would like to thank you once again as a church uh, for your continuous giving, even through these uh, difficult times, uncertain times. And I'm always reminded about the story of the early church that one of the things that characterized their life was giving. And uh, they continued to give and nobody lacked anything. And through this uh, is a reminder that as believers, part of our worship to God is our giving. So I continue to encourage you and to thank you uh, for your giving. Uh, all the platforms we're giving are on your screen and we want to encourage you uh, to use them. Uh, through this time, whether it is today, whether it is in the course of the week, uh, feel free and uh, go ahead and, and give. But also we'd like to remind you also, even before we go into the Word of God, to use the number on the screen to share testimonies, share stories of what God is doing in your life, share a, a prayer request uh, to us, and uh, we can assure you somebody will get in touch with you. So thank you so much once again. Allow me to pray even as we do. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for blessing us with so many gifts. And we continue praying that you will help us to honor you and to worship you with our giving. We continue praying that this giving will bless and touch the lives of your people and continue to advance the gospel which you've committed to us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we are about to hear the word of God. And the question at the back of our minds is, how do we hear God in the midst of a crisis? Today we are reading from the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to be reading from verse 11 through to 13. And I read, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and a powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And now, May the Lord bless his word as we listen from Pastor Fred Divine. Now I have a friend uh, in town, uh, who works in town rather, and a phone call with this guy is uh, stressful because it is very difficult to hear him uh, speak. And maybe you have a friend like that too. When you call them, it's very hard to get what they're saying or even to have a conversation. Uh, maybe speaking to people who feel like that uh, with God, especially during this uh, season, a season of need. And maybe you have questions like, God, where, where are you? God, what should I do? Um, what is happening? And uh, maybe you have prayed and asked and no answers are coming. This uh, someone is about um, helping us understand and know how do we hear God in times of, in times of crisis. The verse we just read about Elijah, he was just at that point where he needed, really needed to hear the voice of God. And the mistake about Elijah is that he was looking for God in the wrong places, in the wrong uh, areas. And how can we not make the same mistakes that Elijah did or made as he sought for God? So how do we hear God clearly in a time of crisis like this? I want to share with us uh, five things that can help us to hear God um, in crisis, not only in crisis, but any other time of, uh, of our lives. So the first thing I will share with us is position your heart. Position your heart is simply mean, is simply uh, placing yourself at a place where it is easy for God to, to speak to you. And one of the things you can do in this, uh, in this case is number one, repentance. God has always moved and has always acted in places where people have been repentant. You can take this time and this season to repent on behalf of your family and of, of yourself. The other thing is position your, your heart by moving away from distractions and the noise and the business of this life. When we are very busy and active in our lives, it is very difficult to hear what God is saying. So position your heart by getting away from the distractions and the business of life. The second thing we can do to hear God clearly, especially in this season, is desire to hear from him. A verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, the Bible says, you will seek me and find me. You will find me when you seek me with all, with all your heart. I have a question for you. How desperate do you really need to hear from God? Do you really need to hear from him in the first place? Many times we go to God and uh, we think we have prayed because we have presented our needs. Most of us, when we, we hear the word seek, we always assume it is, it is prayer. And when you say prayer is, just presenting a request before God and telling him what you want, what you want. Prayer is never complete if there's no aspect of listening. So seeking God means simply stopping in your tracks and asking yourself, what are you saying to God? Where are you, God? That is about seeking God. So the first thing is position your heart by repenting, by removing yourself from the business and the noise of life. The second thing is desire to hear from him, desire to know what God is saying. The third thing is follow and know him. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 27, that my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. My sheep follow me. A closer relationship and a closer walk with God will help us to hear God more and better. The further you walk from him, again, the more difficult it is to hear 
what God is saying. How is your relationship with God in this season? Are you, would you say you're close with God? Because the closer you are uh, to God, the clearer, the better you hear him. Follow him, know him, and seek him. And uh, as the, uh, you know, as the government has uh, closed some churches and, you know, in some counties here in Kenya, many of us would rest and think, you know, church is closed, so it is difficult to seek and to follow God and, and to know him. You can do that at the comfort of your home. Bible study, uh, prayer, um, online fellowships. Those are aspects and things that can help us to continue knowing and following God. Just like I said again, number one is uh, those things that can help us to hear God clearly. Number one is position your heart. Number two, desire to hear from God. Do you really want to hear uh, from him? Number three, follow and know him. The fourth, the third thing, uh, the fourth thing that I want to share with us that will help us to hear God in a better way is examine your circumstances in light of God's overall uh, plan. Jeremiah 29 tells us that God speaks to the Israelites and tells them that I know the plans that I have for you. And when the Israelites heard this, maybe some of them thought, you know, help is coming the next day. And it took 70 years for them to be uh, uh, released from exile. Sometimes when you look at life in a single event like this situation that we are in at the moment, like the pandemic, it is difficult to know the overall plan that God has for us. Why don't we test our lives and our circumstances in lives of God's overall plan, the plan that he has, he has for us? The, fourth, the fifth thing uh, that will help us to hear God clearly is we need to mirror our circumstances with the truth of God's word. What is God's word saying to us at this point in time? God will never contradict himself. You know, sometimes we hear voices and we tell ourselves things. It is important to weigh and measure these things against the truth in God's word. Are they consistent with the Bible? Maybe some, someone has spoken to you, someone has said something to you. Maybe you have thoughts in your mind. Are these thoughts consistent with the word of God? Mirror your circumstances against or with the truth of God's word. Truth is, I do not know uh, anything specific that God is speaking to us. However, there are those general things that God does speak to each one of us. Things like, uh, I love you. That is one general message that God speaks to all of us, and we need to know that God loves us. He also reminds us that all things work for our good. So it doesn't matter the situation we are in at the moment, all things are working for our good. God is also reminding us to be obedient children and to love him and to keep his, his commands, and that his plans are wonderful. So those are generally... Um, things, the general things that God does speak uh, to us. But for the specific things that, you know, God would be speaking to you as a person, these five things that I have mentioned will help you to know what is really God saying to me at this point in, in time. Just to mention them again one more time is position your heart. Repent. Move away from the noise and the busyness of life. The second thing is desire to hear from him. Do you really want to hear what God is saying? Or are you just talking and talking and talking to him in prayer. Follow him. Follow him and know him. The closer you walk with God, the easier it is to understand and know his voice. Then examine your circumstances in light of God's overall plan. It is not just a single event. God does not just speak to a single event. He has a plan. Lastly, is mirror your circumstances with the truth of God's word. Are the things you're hearing, the things you're telling yourself consistent with the Bible? Those five things can help us to hear God more and more and more clearly. I want to pray with us uh, at this point in time. Maybe I'm speaking to someone who is really desperate to hear God uh, say something about the situation they're in at the moment. Maybe a decision you want to make. Maybe a step you want to take. I want to pray for someone like that. Maybe also for someone who has really been praying and uh, no answers are coming. I want to pray for you that God will encourage you and as you keep trusting and hoping that answers will come, that you will be sensitive to hear to hear him. Just like Elijah, God does not sometimes move in those things that we think. Elijah heard God in the still, small voice. And like the things he thought God would move. God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. God was in that still, small voice. And that takes attentiveness and attention to hear what God is saying. And Elijah heard God. 
I believe that you too can hear God if you only do these five things that we have shared uh, today. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for whoever has heard this message. And maybe we have prayed. Maybe some of us are really desperate like Elijah to hear you speak. I pray that these five things will help us, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you will help us to position our hearts by repenting, by moving away from the noise and the business of life. Lord, I pray that we will really desire to hear from you. Lord, help us to follow and to know your voice like Jesus spoke in John chapter 10. I pray that, Lord, we will examine our lives uh, according to your overall plan that you have for us. And that whatever we hear people speak to us or um, we tell ourselves or the things we imagine or say, I pray that we will measure these things with the truth of your word. And I pray that the clarity of your voice will be in our minds even as we desire and search for you. So speak to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we, we, we bless you. Please, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, say, hey. Your love is patient. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You feel my heart with so much peace and joy. Come on, tell him you're amazing.